Hello, my name is Colin Greatwood, and today I'm here to show you how to set up a Festo CDPX Generation 2 HMI from Festo as a remote visualization HMI. You can see here that I'm working with a Festo CACN 120 volts AC single phase power supply to 24 volts DC output. A CPXE-CEC-M1 Festo Codesys controller and a Festo CDPX E1 HMI. The E1 is important as it has an embedded Codesys version on it, 3516 or newer. And I've tilted the HMI just to reduce glare on the screen so we can see more of what's going on. Transitioning over to Codesys, you can see I'm running version 3.5 service pack 16 patch 4. I'll start a new project. Make it a CPXE-CEC project. And I'll use variant 35-1844 with ladder logic as my PLC PRG. I don't need the Ethercat master as of right now. Now that my project has been created, I'll add a visualization manager to the application. Under visualizations, you can see I don't have any visualizations currently, so I'll go about adding a remote target visualization. Now that my remote target visualization has been added, I need to add a visualization to my application for it to reference. Just to keep things simple today, I'll add a very basic rectangle with some simple text. There, now that I've added a very simple rectangle with some text in it that'll show us if this works, I'll return to my remote target visualization and reference that visualization screen from our project. The last thing to check here is on the visualization manager, confirm that your visualization you selected is set up for remote target visualization by checking this box. Next, I'll return to my controller device, double click, and I'll set up my communication pathway. Next, I'll go to the build menu and rebuild my project. Once I've verified that there are no errors, I'll go to the online menu, create a boot application, save that, then click login. When prompted, yes, download the latest code. and start your PLC. Lastly, I'll save my project. With my PLC in run mode, the last thing I'll need to do on my laptop before transferring over to the HMI is I'll need to move a set of RTV files onto a USB stick. So navigating to my Windows File Explorer, you can see here's the path of where your file is auto-installed when you install Designer Studio software from Festo. You'll need to go to the C, Drive, Program Folders 86, Festo, Designer Studio 4.5, and the Application subfolder. Within that folder, there's a zip file here titled Codesys RTV 3.5.17.0-3, dash linux dash arm dash dot zip. I'll copy it. Go over to my USB. Paste it there. 
and then I'll eject my USB, leaving the zip file zipped. Now I'll transfer over to my HMI. You can see that I have a factory restored HMI. It's a blank screen that says empty boot sequence with IP address eth0192.168.0.1. My system settings and startup sequence buttons are available. Once the HMI has powered on, on first entry, you will be asked to define a new password for both the user user and the user admin. To do this, I'll click on system settings. After waiting a moment, it'll take me to a screen where I'll be prompted to create a new password for the profile user, and I have to type this in twice. Then I'll click the button Change Password, which you can see highlighted here. I get a message saying that the password for user user was successfully changed, and I'll acknowledge that message. Next, it'll prompt me to choose a password for the user admin. After typing this in twice, I'll click Change Password. Again, I get the message Password for User Admin successfully changed. Once those two user passwords have been changed, the HMI will reboot. After rebooting, the boot application is still empty, so I return to this screen. I'll need to go back to the system settings. And this time, I get a login screen, and I'll log in as the admin user. Then I'll press OK. After waiting for a few seconds, I'll be logged in as the admin user, and I come to the System Settings menu. From the System Settings menu, I'll scroll down till I see Applications. Once in the application screen, you can see here that there are no applications named to the screen, and none of them set to Auto Start. To add an application, I'll click App Management in the bottom right, or in the side right. Then I'll click Install Update. A pop-up appears where I can browse. Before browsing, I need to plug in the USB that we saved the zip folder to earlier. Now that I've plugged that USB in, I'll click Browse Image in the top left of the pop-up. And I'll get the file directory for the USB drive. Navigating into my USB drive, I'll find that same .zip folder that we copied from the PC. I'll click it once to highlight it, and then press OK. Now you can see that that specific file is called out, 
and I'll click proceed at the bottom of the pop-up, which will start the update. It says update is in progress. Do not power off the HMI. Finally, I get an install result pop-up. It says installation completed successfully and the HMI reboots automatically. Once the HMI powers back on, the CDPX panel will show the following screen. It's showing a network scan with all field bus controllers shown here. If it doesn't, click scan network in the top right. Once the scan is complete, the left-hand side of the screen will show available controllers. I'm only connected here to my CPXE CEC M1, so I'll highlight that. You can verify you have the right controller using the target ID and other available device address information displayed on the right. You'll click that and press OK. One final thing that needs to be completed is to verify that the HMI will auto start in remote target visualization mode. To do this, I will power cycle the HMI. As the HMI is starting up, I'll double tap the screen. You may have to do this twice. You'll see it says tap tap detected and ask if you want to go into standard or settings mode. Entering system settings, I'll select default mode. Now we get that same startup screen we saw before, except the boot application is no longer empty. From here, I'll click on system settings. And then I'll log in as my admin user. Then I'll press OK to log in. Once logged in, I'll scroll down to that same Applications folder. And now you can see that I have Codesys RTV set up here under name and auto start is blue or enabled i can toggle that off toggle that on i want that to be on then i'll return to my menu and restart my system in standard operating mode again by clicking restart main os and ok Now the HMI will restart itself. After starting back up, it will attempt to make a connection with this CPXE controller again for its remote target visualization if it's been updated. And after a few seconds, the HMI will pull the remote visualization from the PLC. And you can see that shown here with my simple little rectangle with the RTV test in the box. Thank you for listening.